family, profits will go to the Diana Princess of Wales Fund. And that's all for now. The next news is at six o'clock. Good afternoon to you now where the weather's going to get itself into a real frenzy as we approach the end of the year. Look at this massive cloud looming up on the horizon. It's there in the middle of the Atlantic. It's a low pressure system which is still developing. It's moving north eastwards rapidly. It'll swing wind and rain across the whole country as we go through the next two or three days. So a very, very unsettled spell of weather indeed as we go through to the end of the year. So an early warning of some pretty nasty weather to come for northwestern Britain in particular during Tuesday. Heavy rain and gale force winds could lead to some local flooding. Now we've seen some rain this morning, notably across Southern Ireland, pushing across North Wales up through the Irish Sea. So it's a wet afternoon in store for North West England in particular. That rain extending further south through Wales and into the West Country. For many Western and some central parts of the country then, it will turn wetter through the day with the brightest weather remaining over Scotland and down through Eastern England. Tonight a touch of frost returning for eastern parts of Scotland, maybe some fog around as well. Elsewhere relatively mild, but it will be wet everywhere with some spells of rain to come and then a drier spell before more rain gets back into Northern Ireland. Now on BBC One Scotland, reporting Scotland with Jackie Bird. Good afternoon. A former Western Isles Council leader has been charged with carrying an offensive weapon and assaulting police officers during a disturbance in Stornoway on Christmas Day. 61-year-old Donald MacLeod was remanded in custody. Colin McKinnon reports. Donald MacLeod, who was the Western Isles Council convener from 1991 to 1994, was taken to court in the back of a police car this morning. In a private appearance before Sheriff John Murdo Graham, Mr MacLeod was charged with a series of alleged offences at two private addresses in Stornoway on Christmas Day. Mr MacLeod is accused of vandalism, malicious mischief, carrying an offensive weapon, assaulting two police officers and breach of the peace. He made no plea or declaration and was remanded in custody for further inquiries. He's expected to appear in court again in a week's time. Colin McKinnon reporting Scotland. The teaching union, the EIS, is urging local authorities to tackle the problem of teachers being bullied by colleagues. It says in the last year the number of complaints from staff has reached over 200 and that many incidents are going unreported. Joanne McCauley has more details. The General Secretary of the EIS, Ronnie Smith, described the bullying of staff as being in some respects as endemic as the playground bullying of youngsters. He says many teachers are reluctant to report problems with senior staff because of implications for career prospects. It's worse among temporary teachers who fear their contracts may not be renewed. The EIS says it's deeply disappointed that only 8 of the 32 local authorities have put in place a specific policy aimed at tackling bullying at work. Holly Smith has written to councils asking them to begin talks with teaching unions in order to agree a framework aimed at getting rid of bullying within the profession. Plans for the four potential sites for the Scottish Parliament building have gone on display in Edinburgh. The front runners are Holyrood and Calton Hill, with Leith and Haymarket unlikely to be chosen. The exhibition will move to the Parish Hall in Glasgow next week. A final decision on where the Parliament building will be sited will be announced by the Secretary of State Donald Dewar early in January. A mentally ill rapist who threatened to slit his victim's throat before subjecting her to a sex ordeal was ordered to be detained at the state hospital in Carstairs without limit of time today. 41-year-old James Woodward held his victim against her will in his home in Whitburn in West Lothian and warned her that he would kill her during the attack. The government has launched a campaign to help parents prevent their children being injured by dangerous toys. Half a million leaflets are being distributed to doctors, surgeries, local councils and playgroups. Television stations will also broadcast a short film which promotes toy safety. David Miller reports. The campaign was launched this morning in an Edinburgh toy shop. Official figures show 36,000 children are injured every year in accidents involving toys. The government is hoping the toy safety campaign will help reduce that figure. It's vitally important that parents buy wisely and don't be fooled by cheap bargains in the sales. Always buy from an outlet to who you know, because if you buy from somebody who's here today and gone tomorrow, they don't really care about the safety of your child. Toy shop owners say the advice to parents is clear. First of all, let's have a look for a toy that's within the child's age group, and then look for one that makes sure that you've got the line mark and the CE mark. Um, otherwise, you can't go wrong.
With the winter sales now well underway and children turning out in force to spend any cash gifts they received, the government says the toy safety campaign should help ensure youngsters have a happy new year as well as a merry Christmas. David Miller reporting Scotland, Edinburgh. Now look at what the weather has in store for us all. Most of Scotland will remain dry today with some sunshine this afternoon, although it will also remain rather chilly. Cloud will increase in the west to bring outbreaks of rain to the southwest and Argyll later in the day. Temperatures will struggle to reach 5 or 6 Celsius, that's 43 Fahrenheit, and winds will stay mostly light. Looking ahead to this evening now, rain will gradually edge across most western areas, but the east will stay dry until later in the night. An early frost will also develop in the northeast before rain arrives by morning. Winds will start off light and then freshen overnight. And that's all from us for now. I'm back with an earlier edition of tonight's Reporting Scotland. Join us at 6.15. But until then, from the lunchtime team, good afternoon. The new issue of the Radio Times includes features on forthcoming BBC programmes together with complete listings for all television and major satellite channels. Food for thought in 20 minutes when the dinosaurs learn they must travel in order to survive cartoon drama in a land before time. First on BBC One Scotland, a few more on the move, or are they?